of uh, the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit, uh, Sepi Golsari Munro. Uh, welcome to you indeed. Now, what everyone's talking about is what's been said on the whole question of uh, fossil fuels. Now, just explain to us, including this sentence saying uh, we're including accelerating efforts towards the phase out of unabated coal power and inefficient fossil fuel subsidies, recognizing the need for support towards a just transition. I mean, what does that really mean? Exactly. Right question. So what this shows is that this text has actually been significantly watered down from the very first draft. So in the second draft, we saw the addition of unabated coal and inefficient fossil fuel subsidies, which reflects the language from the G20 over the last 12 years. And now we're even seeing the addition of efforts towards phasing out as opposed to phasing out. So, of course, it seems that the lobbying behind the scenes of the Saudis and others is having an effect. Now, I think what um, Alok Sharma and uh, indeed the rest of the, the countries around the table today will need to decide, is it worth having a watered down reference to fossil fuels in the text so that you actually have that reference in there? Or should they abandon it altogether because it has been so weakened? I mean, they're probably going to say, yes, it is worth having it in because he's never been there before. Well, who's going to say that? I'm sure the Saudis wouldn't say that. And it all depends now whether they want to gain leverage uh, by using this in order to possibly give way on some other articles that they're perhaps holding up discussions on. But hypothetically, after 26 COPs, if the end conclusion doesn't actually say, yes, it's fossil fuels causing this problem, it's going to look absurd, isn't it? I mean, I think you're saying what the everyday person on the streets would, would absolutely say. Again, others have likened this to, you know, talking about lung cancer without talking about cigarettes, talking about the pandemic without talking about the virus. Um, and so it does seem a little absurd, but we're yet to see whether giving ground on the fossil fuel language actually gains uh, for, you know, the progressive alliances here in other parts of the text. So, for example, we understand that the Saudis are actually holding up discussions and the transparency talks uh, on, on the rules around transparency and they may be doing that as a bit of a tit for tat um, on the fossil fuel language. So maybe they, they might say, well, we'll give way here if you give way there. I mean, it was thought that uh, possibly the Americans and the Chinese would be quite happy not to uh, have to give too much detail on what's going on. That, that's right. Uh, that's right. And certainly the Americans on the, the finance side, the Chinese on the emissions reduction side, they, they, all, they all believe that this gives away too much information about the, uh, the national circumstances and where they are going with their broader economies that they don't really want to reveal to the world. And what, what about this uh, shift that appears to be taking place, doubling uh, the amount of uh, money going towards countries trying to protect themselves from the consequences of, of climate change and uh, uh, sea levels rising and the rest of it. Yes, so, so you're referring to the adaptation finance. So what we've seen um, up to now is that the developed countries are supposed to deliver £100 billion pounds per year uh, from 2020 to 2025. Now, this actually refers to that same envelope, but making sure that almost half of that goes to adaptation. The majority of that actually just goes to mitigation. So it's not new money, but it's about saying you need to put some of that money towards adaptation rather than just mitigation. But the difference is that it, it, it is a grant rather than a loan or something else. That, that, that's what it will have to be. Well, it w that's not decided yet. That's certainly what people say, because actually, you know, in terms of adaptation uh, solutions, they're less readily investable and you can't make a return on those in the same way that a private investor would invest in, you know, um, renewable energy and be able to make a return. You can't do that with adaptation. So they do need more grants and concessionary finance. Now, where are we on, on the big headline trying to keep the increase in global temperature down. Has that changed? Have the efforts to do that improved as a result of what's happened here? They've stayed pretty much the same and that really is going to be seen as quite a victory for those who want to see countries come back within the year with improved um, national pledges to reduce their emissions. So that language is still in there. It's looking strong. It's looking relatively stable. Again, this is not the last draft that we're going to see. So it's, it's looking positive on that front.
I'll say we'll hear what the other countries have to say when we get into that uh, plenary session. Uh, and of course, everyone will be listening out uh, for what China says, because China is currently the world's largest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, uh, not on a per, per, per capita basis, that's the United States. And Sky's Asian co Asia correspondent Tom Cheshire uh, has the latest view on the draft agreement from Beijing.